The Galaxy S22 Ultra is finally here and I've spent the past week with this phone and I have a lot of things to share with you. The Galaxy S22 Ultra is literally a Note series of smartphone but it's just called an S series of smartphone right now. So without further ado, let's begin with our in-depth review today. So the Galaxy S22 Ultra that we have here in Malaysia comes with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chipset and this is the first time that we Malaysians are getting the Snapdragon version on the Galaxy S series of smartphones. But I think it's quite disappointing too since the Exynos 2100 last year on the Galaxy S21 Ultra was much better than the Snapdragon 888 in terms of efficiency and the Exynos 2200 this year comes with an AMD GPU which we don't get to try out this year unfortunately. But enough of that, we are reviewing the Galaxy S22 Ultra today and we'll go across our usual 6 points when it comes to a smartphone. To streamline this review and not to go off on a tangent for a very long time, we are going to focus mainly on the Galaxy S22 alone. We'll have more future videos where we go in depth in a few certain aspects, so subscribe if you don't want to miss out on those videos. Also, this entire video is scripted, edited, uploaded and published by me alone. It is not paid by anyone or seen by anyone else before this video is published. Let's start off with the box of the Galaxy S22 Ultra right here. I know that this box is smaller than last year's Galaxy S21 Ultra and this is also mentioned by Samsung as well. However, I didn't expect this box to be so much smaller. Of course, a box that is this thin means that there's no charger inside just like last year as well. I mean, we are kinda accustomed to this already, right? Check out our quick unboxing of the Galaxy S22 Ultra at the top right corner there. And then we gotta talk about the design of the brand new Galaxy S22 Ultra. This design is something that grew on me. Initially, I preferred the Galaxy S21 Ultra's design. Instead of hiding the camera bump, Samsung just embraced the camera bump and also made it look pretty at the same time. But when I look at the brand new Galaxy S22 Ultra with my own eyes, Samsung made that bump elegant now. It's just 5 circles and that's it. Plus, because of how the camera circles are positioned, the phone doesn't rock as much on the table compared to the Galaxy S21 Ultra when they are both without a case. That's a nice side effect actually. Also, the entire back of the phone is covered by a very nice matte finish material and it is also available in a total of 4 different colours. So we have the usual phantom black, phantom white, and then we also have the new burgundy and also green colour. I saw a lot of polls on Twitter to vote for which colour is your favourite and I saw a lot more people are going for either burgundy or the green colour. Personally speaking though, I'll go for green colour. While it does have the name green in the name, many people just looked at it for the first time and say, oh, it's actually blue. And I get it because that hue is very similar to the Galaxy S10 series with the prism green colour. Again, it's just called green but it looks very blue. And I love that prism green colour too. And combined with this matte finish, it just looks and feels really good. Even the sides of the phone is also very elegant and it is rounded off very smoothly. Both the front and the back pieces of glass curve into the frame and I find this kind of craftsmanship to be just insanely good. Plus, the top and bottom of the phone are also flat as well which is again reminiscent to the Galaxy Note series of smartphones. And also, the entire back and front of the phone are covered by Corning's Gorilla Glass Vectors Plus by the way. And since we're here, let's move on and talk about the screen on this phone. It has a massive 6.8 inch Dynamic AMOLED 2X display with up to 120Hz refresh rate and also down to 1Hz to save battery and it also has a resolution of 3088 by 1440 pixels. On paper, it doesn't sound like much but in truth, this display actually got a big upgrade in terms of both brightness and also color accuracy. When we whipped out our color emitter to test its color accuracy, I had to adjust its brightness to the maximum to see how much it actually goes and I saw 368 nits average when it is at maximum brightness. And that wasn't really that impressive. And then I realized there is another button in the settings menu called extra brightness. I turned that option on, cranked up the brightness to 100% and I was immediately blinded. The Galaxy S22 Ultra went beyond 750 nits of brightness. 
The Galaxy S21 Ultra doesn't even have this extra brightness option by the way. And yet, the Galaxy S22 Ultra manages to achieve every single brightness level with the perfect white point. That is to say all the RGB output values are exactly the same while viewing white colour. Also, Samsung has this feature called Extra Dim where its brightness can go really low which is perfect for viewing the screen in complete darkness. And then we dial the brightness back to 100 nits which is typically what we will use indoors and continue with the colour accuracy test. We got nearly 100% coverage for both sRGB and DCI-P3 colour gamuts and the Delta E value is also very low as well. Oh, I should have mentioned that I also did not change any colour profiles in the settings menu. I just got the phone and I immediately did this colour test. Of course, you can use the magnificent screen to view magnificent photos and videos taken on the Galaxy S22 Ultra. This phone comes with a total of 5 different cameras, each serving its own purpose. The camera setup is very similar to the Galaxy S21 Ultra, but we are leaving the camera comparisons between these two phones for another video in the future. Focusing on the Galaxy S22 Ultra itself, I took a bunch of photos and it's one of those phones that I don't have to worry about a photo turning out bad if I forgot to tap to focus before taking a shot for example. And all of the pictures shown here are taken on a super gloomy day and it already started to rain when I was about to take pictures with this phone. The wind was blowing very strongly to the point that my hands couldn't stay still but the OIS and the software in the Galaxy S22 Ultra managed to stabilize all of the shots. I honestly just used the Galaxy S22 Ultra to take a bunch of photos both indoors and outdoors and I enjoyed every moment of it. So much so that I don't even remember which zoom level was used to take these pictures. I do remember some of the pictures of these dogs were taken using portrait mode though. And of course, one big highlight this time around is the night shots. Samsung made a big deal out of it and we tested it out too. And I was immediately impressed. The pictures have clearly gone through some algorithm to clean it up, but it still looks very authentic and it's clearly a night shot. And yet, we still haven't touched on Expert Raw app which offers a lot more control to take pictures with professional tools. To avoid going off on a tangent, we'll leave that for yet another video too. And for video side of things, Samsung also said that the stabilization has improved. So I shot a video in 4K 60fps of me walking across a very bumpy path during broad daylight and it looks good, so no surprises there. And then when the night fell, I took the same test again and yes, it does have some post-processing artifact when it comes to the stabilization, but it still looks very good. The noise level is surprisingly little. But this is not the end of our camera test of the Galaxy S22 Ultra. We have shot the same pictures and videos with the Galaxy S21 Ultra that we have here, so we'll have another comparison video coming soon, so stay subscribed. Now, moving on to the performance side of things. The Galaxy S22 Ultra that we have here in Malaysia, as what we've mentioned, comes with the Snapdragon chipset, namely the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. Like what we've mentioned in our performance test, even though it is thermally throttled and games are rendered at a lower resolution, the frame rate coming out of it is actually pretty good and it definitely didn't overheat as the surface temperature is always below 40 degrees Celsius. I mean, this phone isn't even made for gaming so thermal throttling to maintain a comfortable user experience is understandable. I just wish that there's an option for us to tap on it and make it go full blast. Still, I want to know how the Exynos 2200 with the AMD GPU performs, but it only seems to be available in Europe right now. Hmm. Now, moving on to the battery life of this Galaxy S22 Ultra. I'm impressed that Samsung managed to fit in a 5000mAh battery despite having to sacrifice some space to fit the S Pen inside the phone. I can provide our usual battery life test results like what we do here but that doesn't really make much sense so I'm just gonna spoil the comparison between this phone and the Galaxy S21 Ultra with the Exynos 2100 when it comes to the battery life test. I calibrated the Galaxy S21 Ultra with the Exynos 2100 and the Galaxy S22 Ultra with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. Both of these phones at 100 nits of brightness, adaptive frame rate, 1440p resolution and connected both of these phones to Wi-Fi. Both phones ran the PC Mark 10 battery life test side by side and I even filmed this time lapse just for you to see. The result is astonishing yet quite perplexing. 
The Galaxy S21 Ultra, which had gone through a lot of charge cycles since it was my daily driver for the first 8 months of the year 2021, and it also had a SIM card inside while having both Facebook Messenger and Telegram running in the background. Yet, somehow the Galaxy S21 Ultra that I have personally daily driven for 8 months manages to outperform the brand new Galaxy S22 Ultra in our battery life test. This could be caused by a few reasons. Either the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 is inefficient or the optimizations for the Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 and subsequently the Galaxy S22 Ultra is just not that good yet. Either way, there's a noticeable gap when it comes to the battery life test but that's not really a big deal since they are both having a 5000 mAh battery and it can definitely go through my one day of intense usage without much of an issue. As for the charging time, we use our Ugreen 100W gun charger to test out the charging times of the Galaxy S22 Ultra. While Samsung did claim that this phone can support up to 45W of wired fast charging, our watt meter only reported about 28W which is weird. We don't know why this happens so we'll leave this mystery for another time. Either way, I just leave it to charge and it charged up from 15 to 100% in about an hour's time, which is actually quite fast. And lastly, the software. It comes pre-installed with Android 12 with Samsung's One UI 4.1 and it just feels exactly the same like the Galaxy Z Fold 3 that I've got so accustomed to the features available on One UI and my muscle memory just make use of all of those features available like each panel with the screenshot snipping tool or the Samsung Pay for example. To me, they are not bloatware because I use all of these features on a daily basis. I've seen other smartphone brands try to mimic all of these features but in a very sloppy manner so Samsung's One UI is still my go-to skin for Android smartphones. And let's not forget, Samsung also bumped up their software update policy too. So Samsung promised a total of 4 generations of Android OS updates and 5 years of security patches for the entire Galaxy S21 and Galaxy S22 series of smartphones. That's actually even better than Google themselves. And we shouldn't forget about the main star of the show, the S Pen. Since the Galaxy S22 Ultra is basically a Note, the S Pen is stored inside the phone. However, whatever color of the Galaxy S22 Ultra that you've bought, only the tip of the pen will correspond to the phone's color. The entire shaft of the pen is still gonna be black color. That is not a big deal but the thinness is a big deal to me. Yes, it's much more convenient than the Galaxy S21 Ultra which needs to use a specific case just to carry the S Pen around and we don't have to deal with deteriorating cases too. Um, yeah, the original Samsung case for the Galaxy S21 Ultra with the S Pen has just deteriorated for me. But comparing the size of the S Pen of the Galaxy S21 Ultra and the Galaxy S22 Ultra, you can clearly see the difference in thickness and also the size in general. The thicker body is definitely much more comfortable to hold and the Galaxy S22 Ultra's S Pen is just the same tweak-like S Pen that we've seen in the Galaxy Note 20 series of smartphones. Still, if you just want to whip out the S Pen and take a quick note or to sketch something, then that shouldn't be a problem. Else, you can get the Lamy Safari Twin Pen which has a ballpoint pen plus an S Pen for a much more comfortable grip. Or you can even get the S Pen Pro. I will review at the top right corner there. What I'm impressed though is that the new S Pen really feels responsive thanks to Samsung's new prediction algorithm that enhances the latency of the S Pen down to just 2.8 milliseconds. The numbers don't put anything into perspective, but I really felt the difference when I started writing or drawing on the Galaxy S22 Ultra. As a quick mention, the new Samsung Notes can convert more handwritten languages into text as well. I only know how to write English and Malay, so I can't really test that out for you. Even though I'm Chinese, I don't actually know how to read or write Chinese. And so finally, the question is, should you buy the Galaxy S22 Ultra? Well, if you're already eyeing a new Galaxy Note smartphone, then the Galaxy S22 Ultra is your only option. To me, the Galaxy S22 Ultra is like improving the Galaxy S21 Ultra, which is already my personal perfect phone for the year 2021. And then Samsung just took this phone, added an S Pen inside the phone, and voila, the Galaxy S22 Ultra. What I'm concerned though is the starting configuration of the Galaxy S22 Ultra is a bit insufficient. 
I suggest you not to get a base version at 128 gigs of storage at the price of 5,099 ringgit. 128 gigs of storage is just insufficient, especially with the cameras on the Galaxy S22 Ultra, which are so good that I think anyone owning this phone will just go trigger happy and start snapping pictures everywhere. I suggest you to get at least the 256 gigs version at the price of 5,499 ringgit. Yes, the price is steeper, but if you are willing to spend that much for a smartphone, then I can assure you that price is worth your money. But this review isn't the last content that we're going to have for the Galaxy S22 Ultra. We'll have a lot more coming soon, particularly the comparison with the Galaxy S21 Ultra. Again, do subscribe for that. And before I end this video, there's one more question that a lot of people have been asking me. Will I change my daily driver phone from the Galaxy Z Fold 3 to the brand new Galaxy S22 Ultra? Mm, I can't really answer that. Maybe not now, I guess. The Galaxy Z Fold 3's massive display when it is unfolded is just something that other phones cannot replicate. So yeah, that, that's what's holding me back. So yeah, that's our in-depth review of the Galaxy S22 Ultra. If you have any questions, do leave them down in the comment section below. I'll try to answer them whenever I can. And we'll see you guys in our future video regarding the Galaxy S22 Ultra. Goodbye. Oh, that is a long video.